What was Russell Street really like? You may well ask. Did you know that not a stone's throw from us was born Sean O'Casey, author of The Plough and the Stars? I think I've already mentioned that down the North Circular Road had lived James Joyce. He was in Richmond Terrace, a cul-de-sac he called a one-eyed street. The North Circular itself is a great wide street, built, according to Brendan, to move troops around a rebellious city and to give the soldiers a wide feel of fire. The houses in Russell Street were typical Dublin tenements with large windows. Some were shiny with clean curtains, others dusty and grimy, holding dirty rags of curtains. Some of the houses were the ho closed hall door kind. They were lived in by people who had work and could afford bigger rents. Ours was the other kind. The doors that hung back into the gloomy hallway day and night. The pub on the corner was Den Fannin's. It was later bought by Jemmy Gill, whose name it bears to this day. The kids played football in the street before darkness fell, while their big fellas stood around at scattered groups at both corners, some playing cards, others arguing how best the country should be governed. Collins left it all up when he made a deal with Britain. You're a nephin liar. Deb was the cause of it all. Everyone knows he betrayed when the British captured him. Declared himself an effing yank. The big fellows were the men who couldn't or wouldn't find regular work. They lived by their wits. Picking up five shillings here or there to increase. Or more, more often to lose it on the horse races. When they hadn't any money they would stand at the corner beside Jemmy Gill's pub. Waiting to see what the day's luck would bring. They could be coarse and would fight and use bad language on a Saturday night. But they had a good rebel spirit, all right. And for the rustlers, as they called themselves, I'd never known people like those slum dwellers of Russell Street. They called me Lady Bean, because I wouldn't sit in the steps gossiping all day as they did. They were as common as ditch water. But in the things that really mattered, they were the cream of the earth. They looked after each other in sickness, and for all their poverty, they had a grand time. We used to sing and dance every opportunity we got. Yes, the slums were bad. But are the new housing estates any better? They're the mother sit in the pubs all day and have no idea half the time where their children are. So that's how you get this vandalism. The Russell Street children were bold lumps enough. But there was always someone on the street keeping a watch on them. Not that people didn't drink, you understand. And it was a rough place on a Saturday night. A drunken night. Then the people would get very drunk and use foul language. Swearing at anything and everybody they came across. I didn't like it much, but I had to put up with it. I lived there. When they were drunk, they'd forget Lady Bean. And they'd call us bloody old Fenians. Stephen didn't care. As long as he had his pint, he didn't care. He was a good hard worker. Never in bed after seven o'clock in the morning. And he liked the pub at night after working a hard all day. He loved his children. But he took no notice of them. I don't think he'd ever have got married if he hadn't met me. The granny was the queen bee in Russell Street. Sitting up in the bed marking the neighbour's rent books. She was in the top room of the biggest tenement house. And the tenants of five or six houses had to bring her the rent. And the talk. Right up to our bed. They dared not to leave her a week short. Or they went out. Sometimes the granny's son Paddy would be in the bed beside her. He slept with his mother right up to the age of 35. Until the day she died. There wasn't any harm in it, you understand. She just didn't want him taking up another room she could let it out for rent. That's all there was. It was a comical sight though. A middle-aged baldy fella lying there beside his mother. I couldn't understand it. My sisters and I wouldn't wash ourselves in front of our brothers. Yeah, here were these two sleeping in the same bed. And using the paw underneath it. They ate and slept in the same room for all those years. And I found out later, drank in it. God help her, she had a terrible bad leg. Suffered a seize of sorrow with that leg. So at night she would have to have a good drink of whiskey. When she died we found hundreds, well dozens of empty whiskey bottles hidden away at the back of the bed. She used to pour it out of a china teapot so the tenants wouldn't know. 
she would send out for it on the sly when we weren't there. She had a gang of old cronies who would gather around our bed and give her all the news of the street. First there were two old sisters, Maggie and Jack. They called her Jack because she drank pints like a man and smoked a pipe. She used to sell coal off a donkey and cart. She inherited the coal business from her husband when he died. When the nights were cold, she used to trundle the old donkey up the stairs and into her room for the night. If the donkey wouldn't move, she would lift him. She was a powerful, strong woman. It would give my children quite a fright to see the velvet lugs of the donkey peeping around the stairs. Another of her cronies was Miss McHugh. He used to make mortuary habits for the dead. In the evening she would take some of our work up to the granny's room and start sewing. She couldn't afford the light to work by her in our own room. She sewed her own habit, slept in it every night until she died. Her main customer for the mortuary habits was a nearby convent. She made the nuns brown habits with a big cross down the front of them. And the nuns paid her half a nothing. When Miss McHugh died, one of the nuns that she used to sew for asked me to show them our habit. When they had finished passing it round and admired it, one of them said, And wasn't it well for her that she had us to work for? Sure you didn't half pay her, I said back to them. She went blind sewing your habits on the cheap. Then how did she live? said the nun. My mother-in-law kept her, I said. And it was true. Even a mean nail one like the granny looked after our friends. She told me once, Don't talk to me about freedom. You can starve as easily under the green flag as the Union Jack. Freedom from want is the only freedom worth having. <laughs>